I left Nigeria back as uh, far as uh, 2012, and it was a very funny story. Um, as you can see from my social media pages, my best food is Amala. <laughs> so I walked after work. I'm a medical doctor, full-time doctor. After work, I went to this famous place in Oshogbo where they have Amala, just next to my hospital. So while I was there, um, I sat down with the food, and then I saw this newspaper advert saying, doctors needed urgently in Saudi Arabia. Um, so I abandoned my plate of Amala. The, 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 the rewards were just um, amazing, and I, I couldn't believe my eyes, you know, free accommodation, uh, free flights. Um, I was earning, you know, I was going to earn like times 20, you know, of what I earned at the time in dollars as well. So I packed my bags, went home, packed my bags off to Lagos. I, 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 was, I was at the Kedja for the interview. Like immediately? In, immediately, I left the Amala, went home, packed my bags, and off I went to Lagos. The next day, I went for the interview, did the interview. There were loads and loads of people there, um, did the interview, and got picked. And I was on my way to Saudi Arabia. So from Nigeria, I worked in Saudi Arabia for uh, two years. And then I walked around the Middle East, Dubai, Oman, Bahrain. And from there, while I was working, I was um, writing my exams uh, to work in the UK and the Republic of Ireland. So from there, I got a lecturing position in the UK. Um, and then I was able to pass my exams within that time. So I got my licenses to be able to practice in Europe. So um, at the moment, I can practice in Europe, I can practice in New Zealand, I can practice in the Middle East, and of course in Nigeria as well. So my journey hasn't been straightforward. Uh, my journey has been from Nigeria, scattered around the Middle East and then Europe. The first culture shock I, I, I faced was um, I landed on a Thursday and obviously Friday, uh, but it didn't click that Friday was a day to be respected in the Middle East, in the Muslim society. So I got up, uh, was looking for food. I got out of my house and after walking for like five minutes, it still didn't click that I was the only one in the environment. OK, so um, after walking about, say, uh, 500 meters, um, I suddenly saw a car just drove in front of me and blocked me and then I saw all these guys in gears just came and of course I didn't them. So the, the guy the guy just came and said, uh, what are you doing out here? It's Friday, you're supposed to be praying. I'm like, uh, I paused and then he said, okay, are you a Muslim or a Christian? Yeah, are you a Muslim or a Christian? I swear, I didn't know whether to say Muslim or Christian. <laughs> Because I didn't know, I didn't know what was going to happen. If you say Christian and they start flogging you, if you say Muslim, why not in the mosque? <laughs> so I paused and the guy said, bring out your ikama. I showed him my ikama, which is like a res resident permit. That shows your religion. So it shows, you a it shows I'm a Christian. And then he said, um, where are you coming from? I said, I just got into Saudi yesterday. I don't know what's going on. Then he said, well, today's Friday, Jimat. You have to be praying. If you're not praying, you respect it. Stay in your house between this period. So I said, OK. He said, everywhere is closed. You can't even get food. So I said, I I'm sorry. I will walk back right now. <laughs> and then another one that was amazing, even though I was a doctor, um, I couldn't speak to female patients. So if a man comes in with a woman, and the woman is the one with the problem, you cannot talk face to face to her. You cannot ask her. You have to ask the husband, say, OK, why have you brought this woman here? And then the husband will. So my first experience, I spoke to this woman who had a breast lump. And I was talking, the husband was just looking at me. <laughs> so when I finished, he was answering me. And when I finished, the guy just lost it. How can you be talking to my wife? I was like, I'm, I'm not toasting your wife, guy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> calm down. Um, so the, 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 the medical director had to give me an education, you know, yeah. So we were able to just placate the guy at the moment, at that time. So that was one culture shock for me as well. I've traveled a lot of countries. I've seen 50 different countries now. Um, I would say that in Europe, um, OK, so some, some very interesting ones. When I got to Europe, I was in my house, just sitting on my own. And friends said, ah, come, well, there's this birthday party happening. Let's go and eat. Said, ah, birthday party. Oh, yeah, let's go now. Where's the venue? So I went to the venue. We ate. We ordered, ate everything, finished. 
birthday party. At the end of the day, the celebrant came and said, this is the bill. And in my head, I'm thinking, bill for what? I should pay that you invite. I was in my house. <laughs> I was in my house. You invited me. I came to it. Now I have to pay the bill. So that was one. The second one was, of course, driving um, in Nigeria you're on the left side, but in, in the UK, you're on the right side. So that was another culture shock for me in Europe. Okay. It's important to state that I always talk about the way to live legally, within the legal bounds, without violating any international laws, which is opposed to what people do, most people do. And um, if you notice very well, people live, you know, it's upward movement. You're living from poorer countries to rich countries. And interestingly, it's not as if the people who live, um, who live this, who live their countries, illegally, generally speaking now, are not the poorest of the poorest when you put the standard of their country into context. They're not the poorest of the poorest. But because they, they're looking for better opportunities, they're looking for uh, a place where they will get you know, larger finances, a better standard of living, education, good access to health, that's why they're living. So they don't care how they do it so long as the promises, you know, it, 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 they, they've been given good promises, then they just take that pathway. Um, I always use my social media handles on Instagram, on YouTube, Waka Waka Doctor, to tell people of the legal ways. And the reason why people most times don't want to po follow this pathway is because um, I would say it's inherent laziness. Because you have to do the work. You know, this illegal pathway, they're possibly going to say, pay this amount of money, we will just move you across the border. But they, they don't consider the consequences that come with it. This way that I preach involves a lot of, you know, work. You have to do a lot of work. So it means that you have to do research, you have to make applications, you have to pay little amount of fees, and then get the end result. So if you're not open to working, I give tips I point you towards the right direction, but if you're not open to working, then it becomes a difficult task for you. So the easiest way is to keep educating ourselves. We keep educating these people and passing the information across. And I, I mean, this is what one thing I'm doing now, and it's one thing I've been doing for the last 18 months using Instagram, Twitter, YouTube to pass the information across. Um, if someone comes to you to say, okay, I'm gonna take you to Europe, you're a cake baker, I'm gonna get you scholarship. There are documents you want to see your documents you want to see, you have your original passport. Have you submitted a statement of, of motivation or a letter of, of, of intent? Do you have a visa? Have you submitted documents to help you get an original visa? Do you have a work permit? Have you seen an original work permit? Have you called your employers over there to confirm that I have a real job and I'm coming to resume? So that again brings me to my first point that people are mentally lazy. They don't want to do the work. Because when someone gives you documents and say, oh, this is your document, we're going abroad, you should say, give it to me. Let me confirm if it's real. Let me confirm if it's original. If it's a work permit, I'm going to call my employers to see if this job is real. If it's a school admission, I'm going to ring up the school to find out if it's real. Um, I told you behind the cameras, I said, people have this mentality that you know, things work outside just the way it works in this country. It's wrong. If you pick up the phone and call an admissions office, they will talk to you. If you pick up the phone and call an employer, they will talk to you. You're just looking for information. And if the information is real, they definitely get it. So, like I said, the basic, the first way to help with spread of information, um, help curb this is spread of information, um, educating people. And that's what I've been doing for the last 18 months using my social media platforms. Nothing good comes extremely easy okay um, you have to be patient I, I tweet sometimes I say that <laughs> I say when you travel abroad <clears throat> things your life changes you know your skin becomes fresh <laughs> your smile is different okay there's peace of mind you know things come to you easily um, you can actually actualize your dreams. You can live out your dreams right in front of you because there's a system that supports that. Um, so my advice is 
When you go abroad, be patient. Keep working hard. Don't stop. Don't relax. You know, have a vision. Write it down. Allow your eyes, your eyes, see that vision. You know, consume it and continue to work towards it. it it's it's simple, simply as basic as that. That that would be my advice. Uh, save and always call home because. Um, one of the one of the downsides to going abroad is that it can be boring sometimes. That's why you, you should call friends. Don't cut people off. Call friends. You know, um, always call home. If you miss home, like I'm home now because I missed Amala. I missed all those things, <laughs> so I came home. So um, yeah, that's my advice. Keep working. Keep your head down. Um, of course, keep your connections back home so that you can always come back to them. This is a huge subject. It's a huge subject and it's not something I can share in one, two minutes. Um, so I'm going to say that the first thing you want to do is open an Instagram account if you don't have an Instagram account and look for me, Waka Waka Doctor, because I give tips. Now, there are job boards across Europe, across Asia. Um, you cannot streamline your choices and say that, oh, I just want to be in Canada. I just want to go to the US. I just want to go to the UK. There are 195 different countries in the world. So you have to say that I'm open to any one of them. And most of these countries have job boards, okay? Websites, different websites where you can submit your applications. You go through rigorous interviews. You submit documents. You, if you then succeed, they are able to process your work permits and employ you. Now, some people would say, oh, I've tried the UK. It didn't work out, so they give up. But there are different countries in the world. There's Turkey, there's Lithuania, there's Kazakhstan. I know teachers that I've spoken to, in fact, six, seven of them in the last four or five months who have left Nigeria to Kazakhstan, right? They teach English. They earn at least $1,800 in Kazakhstan which is much more than what they will earn in Nigeria. So there are 195 countries. I post them, I mean, every, almost every day on my Instagram channel. So you can watch and see some of these job boards and apply for jobs. Some basic truths and facts is not every doctor can leave the country. Um, so even if doctors are leaving, more doctors would graduate and you still have doctors around. But doctors are living in their large numbers every day. So the future, on, the future of medicine in Nigeria is, is, is very bleak because you have the extremely intelligent doctors leaving, going abroad because the system abroad is extremely encouraging. The system abroad gives you opportunities to become greater than what you can ever think or imagine. Um, people keep writing their exams, people keep going for interviews because the system allows it. So the advice, the advice straight up I'll give to the Nigerian government is first and foremost, create a platform that encourages us as doctors. Facilities, give us facilities, give us things we can, it's not as if, you know, things we only see in the books, things we can see and work with. Pay us. Pay us money. I worked in Ocean State. My salary in 2011 was 90,000 naira. I was doing two jobs and I couldn't earn 120,000 naira. Two jobs. When I went to Saudi Arabia, salary was $5,000. Look at the discrepancy. It's too huge. And they were owing us six months. You owe someone six months. How can I was seeing 200 patients in a day? 200 patients, how, 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 I mean, the first 10 patients I see would get the best out of me. The other ones, the truth, it's just the truth. The other ones would be, pew, pew, that's it. It doesn't work that way. Create, a, create a, 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 a good culture, a good environment for doctors to work. Pay them properly, you know, give them, you know, standard remuneration that they can compare with their friends and colleagues abroad and say, okay, yes, we, we you know, it's commensurate to the work we do. Nigerian government really has to improve. Um, the future of Nigerian doctors, sadly enough, is abroad. And countries are asking for them. Like, the PLAB exam is an incredibly easy exam to just write and pass. So people are writing it and moving. You know, so 
if Nigeria cannot improve this part, payments, facilities, you know, then, then it's, it's a poor tale. I would end on this note to say that um, this, is a popular, this is a popular theme that I've always passed across to say that travel is not necessary of money, but of courage. And the reason is because it takes courage to decide to leave a place you've been for many years and go to a place that's brand new. You're going to be leaving your friends. You're going to be leaving your family. You're going to be leaving your job. You're going to be in search of ways to make money, uh, search of better career. So it's often very difficult. The first step is the most difficult one, the most daunting one, saying, I want to move. It's very difficult. But I would always encourage you to take that step. When you start, you will get to the end. Don't wait. Start now. It's another year. It's 2022. Uh, my aim is to get at least 2,000 people abroad. So if we can do that, we've succeeded. Okay. There are better opportunities out there. If you, are, if you are attaining this level right now in Nigeria, if you go abroad, you'll be times 20. That's it. So start now. Make the move. If you're in town, if you catch me in any of the cities abroad, you can holler at me and I'll be there. Traveling abroad, migrating abroad is not age specific. You know, age is not a limitation. Even if you're in 50s, in your 50s, you're in late 50s, you can still go abroad. I always talk about academics because academics seems to be the easiest path. But even if it's true career, like I've said earlier, you can go search for these job boards that will give you employment. Again, experience counts. I'll give you an example. Places like Australia are in need of people with huge experiences in different fields. Whether you're a cameraman, you're a technician, you're a chef. If you have five, ten years, electrician, five, ten years of experience and you apply for jobs in Australia, they'll take you. Estonia, Lithuania, these are places that are in need of vocational, you know, you can do vocational studies. If you're not... Um, a skilled worker, so to say. These are places that are in need of you. So age is not a factor. So even if you're 50 and you have 15 years of experience to back this, they're looking for you.